This is Dire Wolf Erasure and I don't support it. Hey guys, Nancy here. Welcome to my channel. I thought about starting something new. It's going to be called Masking and Bemoaning. Um, I'm doing a little mask today. I'm not super close to my skin, but my skin has been acting a dag on Fool. So uh, today the mask will be the Teamy Detox Green Tea Blend and it's got matcha, lemongrass, all that good jazz. And clay, it's four ounces. Um, I just got this at all to almost say I've been wanting to try this. And I will start off the mask using the Origins Maskamizer. And um, I'll put it on with this Moda, was it Royal? Lingen I I'll put it in the name. Y'all know they sell these at Walmart, but this is the spa set for the mask. Yeah. So the bemoaning will be my little pop culture segment. I want to try something new as I mask with y'all. My skin has been acting a fool to the point that I had to go to the dermatology and see. I've got kind of dry patches. I don't know what that is. Thought it was going to be something. So yeah, I'll go see them later on this week. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so we're gonna talk about some TV. Um, before you start your mask, you use the Origins Mask Miser, which to me, quite frankly, is kind of a necessary step. But here we are. All right, so um, 2019 has been crazy. I don't want to talk about anything specifically as far as news, like um, politics at this particular juncture. I'm gonna talk about Netflix and HBO. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, um, and you just put this on for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And it's relatively thick. It does. It smells good. It's the the lemongrass. All right. So I have um I was thinking about talking about Game of Thrones, but I actually don't want to get too into that. So I'll talk about that because I want that to be my first kind of segment going on. Um. To occupy my time because it seems like we've been basically waiting two years for this last season to stop and um so yeah it's been about two years uh, since they took a whole year skipped a whole year to finish this out um i don't think i'm gonna be i haven't been particularly jazzed but i have been getting into like the um theory videos so that has been interesting some of the theory videos have been a little more um entertaining than i feel like the last season was so ooh, it's still later on pretty thick but it's a thick mask and when you put on the mask you put this on any way you want to um yeah so what is your theories um i am gonna go full disclosure i have read the books I'm waiting on like every book reader. Y'all are complaining about waiting, you know, basically two years for this last season. Well, think of people that have been reading books since they came out. Y'all been waiting 20 something years, which I don't, I don't blame them. And I'm not one of those people that's going to, um, even though I wish you would put a little more, you know, pep in his step, getting to it, that I'm not one of them people that's just like, oh, George R. R. Martin needs to hurry up. He needs to do this and that. Um, I have not. Those books are very detailed, so much more detailed than the show. And even for whatever you think about the show, which I haven't loved it for um, since after season, basically after Joffrey died, after that season, it just was the pits for me. It wasn't really good. Um they have had as a season now they've had good episodes but not necessarily good um entire seasons just stuffed in jail and they seem like they were checking ticking off boxes i'll even say that about the last season like he's they've all gotta meet at the dragon pit they've all gotta go out beyond the wall daenerys and john finally meet i was like i didn't care if they never met that's fine 
you've always, and I know as far as maybe logistics wise, it makes more sense you can get people all in one area instead of going all over to film. Cause they film like all across Europe, really. They're filming in Belfast, which is their studio. They were filming in Croatia. Um, that's where the King's Landing um, exteriors and stuff is. And they filmed in Iceland. Ooh, don't get your eyebrows, but it's kind of hard to avoid. Try not to get your eyebrows and edges when you do a mask, girl. Um, <laughs> So I can understand they want to put everything in the same kind of place. And they had picked up Spain and Morocco when Daenerys was like, with the Dothraki first starting out over in Essos. The Essos was like, that's when it looked better too and they didn't try to do everything in studio. But, or they put everything in Northern Ireland. Like, they had the some of the exteriors for Dorne in Northern Ireland, you could tell by the beaches like they didn't look anything like um like when they went to do the interiors for i look like shrek uh, <laughs> the interiors for game of thrones um for dorn which that was a disastrous plot point and one i actually quite like in the book but i'm not gonna keep talking about in the books but it's just stuff that i did like more or that is more filled out i did like that if you read um any of the article about um, um, Entertainment Weekly. They sat down with the show, um, the actors, the cast, George R. R. Martin. I did like that they basically said and confirmed what I had thought all along. Vindication! That these are, you know, this this story at this point, even though they started out, they're like church and state now. Um, even though some things may happen, some things, a lot of things probably won't, or at least they won't be the same way okay and you let this sit on for 15 to 20 minutes we're gonna do 15. we've already been a little chatty so far so i did like that he said that he did also say that he is not done and he wished people he wished he was actually moving faster too um but yeah y'all folks that's threatening an old man about his books he doesn't have to write anything ever again and y'all will have to deal with it self-included i want him to finish but if he doesn't what i'm gonna do about it nothing just like you be mad so <laughs> you know um yeah and let's see i did like that they went ahead and said that because there's plenty of people online i don't like to get into i'm gonna set it for 18 it's about the median there's oh and i used my um impressions vanity rose gold lit so i can see a little better while i'm talking to y'all so i did like that they clarified that um and just they had it was just different points it was an interesting read um interesting and then more parts of the show at this point who is your favorite character i don't really have one but i think that the um who has the most interesting storyline so far? Um, Cersei. I wanna. I kind of wanna see where she going with all this. Um, and Bran, of course. But I think his stuff is so fantastical and metaphysical and all that kind of stuff. Um, unless they, we really spend a significant amount of episodes with him, it's not gonna be answered. And I think that that was a ball drop. They could have really focused on Bran because Bran has got it going. I like. To the point that you see the, how powerful he is, and he's a three-eyed um, raven at this point. It's kind of crazy that they skipped, uh, like, that for a whole season, Bran was not in it. And that's that's crazy considering the amount of big deal that he is. Um, some of, A lot of the theory channels that I have been watching, some things are not worth your time. Like, I'm not going to go listen to somebody that has that's like you still arguing about who and who's not in a um main character like if they done made it this far we in the eight seasons and they still stand they their main character as far as i'm concerned even though Bron is clearly not as important as everybody else Bron is a main character because they made him a main character we can move on <laughs> he just he just is even though he's like um he's clearly the associate or the help meet to some people but yeah so yeah, or that y'all talking about y'all hate people and this, that, and 
oh, it can't be this, it can't be that. They don't know. I'm tired of all the videos starting off like, oh, you have got to watch this before the final season. So you don't, because they don't know either. <laughs> you, they're just making it. So I would be interested to see how all that's going to play out. Um, one thing, I'll tell you one of my, who do I think is going to, which it don't matter. I don't think Daenerys is going to make it. Um... Even though it would be interesting to see if she still lives. I don't think Cersei's going to live. Um, so I'm really interested in how they're going to wrap that up. Because they have been pushing her like she's the evil queen. But like the show version of the events, a lot of her motivations make sense. And she does seem to be more concerned with her children and her own legacy. Yes, yeah, she's selfish, but she's not you know mustache twisting selfish of a villain that she is in the book even though she's soups interesting in the book i would tell you to go read them and but all i know is here's another thing y'all need to give lena heady her things because lena heady at cersei lannister has been acting down and the fact that she hasn't won anything like y'all like you know the one who has the acting award former for it is peter dinglish peter dinglish is okay but Lena Headey has been playing Cersei Lannister down. And the fact that some years that she wasn't nominated, but like Amelia Clark was, which, oh my goodness, I, did y'all read that thing about Amelia Clark having two brain aneurysms while she was filming the show? That was crazy. Like, bless her heart. But, oof. but yeah, her level of, of acting versus Lena Headey's, and she wouldn't even get a nomination for an Emmy. Just like, come on. Come on. So I will say that there has been some good acting. I don't think that they have the same amount of material. Cause then you see the people in other things, you know, give or take a couple of them. Like I don't necessarily think that Kit Harrington is that strong of an actor. And I will actually say the same thing about um, Amelia Clark. But I've seen other, especially the older ones, you've seen them in things they have, are established acting down but you know <laughs> that they don't get that same kind of thing with um game of thrones but that is writing i would not put that on i wouldn't really put that on them as acting um some storylines are just ridiculous like i don't it's so much going on that i don't care about like i know i'm supposed to be wild by the dragons i don't care about the dragons um i don't um i just kind of care that ghost live i want to see what's going on with the night king um that needs to be cleared up there's rumors and i tend to believe this this is from book and watching show that i think that the night king is stark um and that's part of one of the reasons he if you look at it he has not attacked john or bran because he's had some kind of connection with them so like maybe he doesn't want to do them because he's like he's cursed because he's trying to do like not add on to it by Ken slaying. You know how that's supposed, that was a big deal and now, you know, it's not just like, you know, being a bastard's not a big deal in the show anymore. Um, you king slaying, you burning up um, houses of worship, Daenerys and Cersei. So yeah, it's just some, and a lot of things that, get, that fell off and don't, like I hope they don't, like I know it's gonna be big battles and I'm supposed to be like, wow, 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 but I've always wanted more like character development because a lot of them, it's an interesting story and a lot of interesting, like the politics kind of, supposed to be this big political show or whatever, but the politics are like poo, poo, poo. Like there are no consequences for actions. I know that we're, and they kind of do this thing that I hate that they do in um, media. Like they're trying to point to you about this is who you should be cheering for. When it's like, man, all, everybody's trash. That's why I'm, I'm cheering for Ghost. <laughs> I'm, I'm cheering for Rhaegal. He's the, he's the dragon that don't nobody care about right now. We just learned his name last week, last season. And um, Drogon is out here showing out every time he gets. And then Viserion, the Night King, got him. So, yeah. So, that's that. I hope don't no more Stark children die. Um, even though I think it doesn't look good for Jon um, either. 
so that might be his thing. I don't know, like, people are like, oh, he's the rightful heir. I don't know if John's gonna make it to get that far after all this is said and done. And he does not really have a head for politics either. Um, they could kill, they could, anybody is up to get murdered. And um, the reason why people don't kind of look at Sansa, it's like Sansa's been through so much, it seems to be like unnecessary to even kill her right now, which they've done that before. They just kill people to get rid of them. Same thing happened with Stannis. The, the, apparently the um, actor was ready to go, which I don't blame him. They didn't utilize him. Stephen Delane is a great actor and he kind of like, he didn't understand what was going on or even get behind like Stannis. So yeah, but moving on. While we're waiting on Game of Thrones, there's plenty of stuff for you to watch on the Netflix. And um, I would turn your attention to um, On My Block, which starts on the 29th so it's this week that i'm shooting this on sunday um i'm just telling on myself we'll see how quick this gets up um yeah so on my block um i am so glad that i got into the i got into this show like last week which i'm glad because like i basically had a week i basically have a week to wait but people been waiting a whole year for this um friend at church have been telling me that it's a good show I need to go ahead and watch. I'm glad I put it off. It was actually really good. So it's based out in South Central LA. Um, these, what is it? It's, it is for them. Um, friends, that's um, Jamal, Caesar, Ruby, and Monte. It's about them. It's coming of age. You got gang. Caesar might have joined the gang. He's not stupid. He's affiliated, yes, because of his brother, but. And his cousins, his uncles, his dad, his grandpa. Even the gay one. I know. I know. But you knew about the gay one? I mean, it goes by the name Bananas. It's not that subtle. No. You got um, a treasure hunt. You got <laughs> you got all kind of shenanigans that come with coming of age. Um, yeah, so I would check that out. I will say, um, so that starts up, yeah, basically Friday. What can I say about it? I do have questions, like... Caesar and I'll insert people's picture. I don't know if I can insert movies or anything like that, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm not that. I'm savvy, but I ain't quite savvy. Okay, so I'll start with Caesar, who has the most conflict. Um, so Caesar is in a gang. That's what his family does. That's what all the men and his family are basically gang members. Santos. Um, so there's a gang um, war going on between the Santos, which is the Latino, well I'll say they're Mexican, they are reading Mexican, and the prophets, and the prophets are black. Even though this is not stress, there is, you know, I'm bringing it up because there is a racial component. Even though one of the friends, like Jamal, he's black, and Monte is half black. Maybe her, is her mama Latino or she just white? I don't know. She looks spicy white, but she could be Latino. She had white waves or whatever. But we'll get to her. So, Caesar's got a lot going on. His brother, Spooky, Oscar, sorry, his name's Oscar, nickname Spooky, um, is the head, the Asian, the Asian I see. Uh, so, he's afraid of him. Spooky been locked up. Um, Monse went away for the summer, came back, you know. Caesar's in the gang. He thought he wasn't gonna have to get in the gang because his brother was locked up because his brother got out on good behavior. Even though um, Spooky has um, two strikes. So, you know, third strike and you're out. So, I wonder is he gonna go to jail within the next um, season? Um, two, with them, like, him and Spooky's dynamic is interesting because you think it's all hard, gang, bang, gang, gang. It is all that, too. But with Caesar and Oscar, um, Oscar clearly is still trying to protect his brother, even though he has to keep, they keep up with that gang life. That, um, Caesar, um, Caesar's and, and Oscar's mom. I wonder if she is in some kind of mental institution because there's a scene when they hang out when there's, you know, a price over Caesar's head because he didn't shoot the little black boy who pulled a gun on him and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, we pulling, whatever. We're pulling guns on each other. That's just the whole point. So, <laughs> so he went and kind of hid out and they went like, you know, I guess like about an hour away to go to the beach and he brings up that, you know, even when mom was there, she wasn't there. So I do wonder if their mother is in a mental institution because that was just an odd way to phrase it so i wonder if that's gonna come up i wonder um what else do i wonder i wonder 
um how long you know like him and Monse is that gonna fizzle out more like I know they kids that basically they got that Olivia girl out of here because <laughs> that girl turned which here's my thing with them everybody on the show that is Latino is played by Latino besides Olivia y'all found this spicy white girl and it turns out she was out here being a racist Trump supporter online and she has played Latino before so she you know messed up her bag and you know now she dead I think they weren't even planning on killing her but you know girl you out here tripping and then your writers all Latino or black or something. What I saw them. I mean, you could be Afro Latino or whatever you want. Even though that's not stress either. I don't know. That's why I was saying I didn't know if um Monse is half black and half Latino. So she could be Afro Latino. So I want them to kind of work on that. I would like their relationship to be filled up. So much of their relationship is, you know, about angst. And of course it is because you got this whole undercurrent of gun violence and gang and turf wars and all that too. So I would like to see that fleshed out between the Prophets and the Santos or how that even started. Because it does seem like them, it being more of a racial thing started not too long ago. Because when they were first mentioning this, you do meet this older lady Rose who was black who was with the OG. She was on Soul Train. She was with the OG Santos gang leader and they didn't used to you know gang bang like they just like you know you read about the blood bloods and the crips was not necessary they didn't start out with the reputation that they have now it started off like you know helping their community and then when did those tensions rise and i know they don't necessarily it's not stress because one of the they have a couple black people in their crew in the group even though they're not in the gang so they're not gang affiliates but they live on the same block and maybe like the prophets, the black folks live, you know, a neighborhood over. So you got that. At least all y'all go to the same high school. And I know y'all played, um, you know, Pop Warner and all that stuff together at that point. But now, you know, you, the boys have gone off and gotten into different gangs. So I wonder, is that going to be stress? Um, Ruby is my favorite character, Ruben. Um, I like him. I like his family. I like that whole dynamic. Um, and my second favorite character is Jamal. Jamal is the only black fleshed out character in this. He's part of the crew. So I would like to see more black kids, which I think if they bring in the prophet um, background more, that will come up. The main prophet that we do know his name is Latrell. So I would like to see more of that and how that come to be um i don't like the way none of them talk to jamal so jamal found all that money he don't need to share with nobody but Ab abuelita and he can maybe throw caesar some more caesar's was not as, as mean to him but ruby and monte y'all would get nothing you just need to come out here and flex on them baby boy so that's how i feel about that i am super excited and super pumped for that to come back um so, and I do wonder how, and they could be nicer to Jasmine, who is, you know, the fluffier girl in the, um, in their grade. And she is extra and she's nasty, but she, I like her. She's a comic relief and she does keep it real. Um, yeah. So I do want to just, they're more and more of their dynamics. I want to see how, you know, Jamal's going to watch this money. It's clear I don't think that little Ricky is dead either and I think they're gonna somebody's gonna come looking for that money because he dug that money up and they had it had been buried since the 80s and but so yeah he needs to him and Abuelita they need to work together to get you know that money needs to go right it's like I think it's like um 250k something like that that's what it was but I think it might even be more than that because they were using like a roller ring to basically wash the money however they would be because even though they were the gang and they didn't start banging necessarily they were doing illegal activities and they were using <laughs> the roller ring to wash the money so that and then all this stuff is happening to them and these kids the main character the only 14 15 years old i mean somebody gets shot at the quinceanera um at the end of the year so that was kind of sad even though i'm you know i'm sad about that happening to that character that girl she had to go we like that's crazy you out here talking like that 
So, yeah, you need to watch on my block. And actually, for like the next mask, and since I'll probably be done with it, we can go ahead and get into it some more. All right. And um, the next one I want to talk about, well, the final one is Sabrina. The Chilling Tales of Sabrina. Not to be confused with uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch because, boy, this is a, not the same thing. Even though same kind of character names is how it started off, but this is based on a comic book. The same dude that does Riverdale is the same person that does this. And you know how Riverdale is like a sexy version of Archie. <laughs> you know, the Archie comic. This is a sexy version of Sabrina who does make an appearance in the Archie comic. But, um... I just have questions. First question is, Am how old is Ambrose? That is Sabrina's cousin. He's a little half black boy. I'll insert him. Um, because we know he been on house arrest for 75 years. And I know that when the witches, if they are still, if they're not as communicated to a, such a degree, um, they don't age. So, yeah, and he's half black, so he clearly, he's old, and he makes some old references, so I don't know. So I know they do have another sibling, because he's not, yeah, he's not Sabrina's brother. So I do wonder if, um, one, his parents is alive, so I'm not, it wasn't clear if it was the mama um, you know, Ambrose's mother or father that is a spellman. Because he is, I'm gonna lean more towards another brother. Like, I have not read the comic book, I just know it's based off of a comic book. I'm not being into comic books, actually, or graphic novels. I would rather read a regular book. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the second one, is anyone ever gonna, is anyone gonna find out about, um, Letitia? Letitia and Judas are Father Blackwoods and um, Mrs. Blackwood, she dead now, so it don't matter. <laughs> Their kid, who they have clearly in the Church of Night, that's the name of the coven, um, they clearly have some sort of sexist situation going on, and that they've been really pushing for a male to be the one with the power to take over and just bring them into the new lit. But the teacher was born. Oh, that's my timer. It's about time to take this mask off. But I'm gonna keep on going. So Letitia, Letitia was born first. So she would be the one that would um, have it right. And as you can see, when you start looking at other people, they have been trying to get like the babies or another sibling out of the way. So. Is that gonna come up? Is it ever gonna come out? Because Aunt Zelda, who was a mid, who is you know a witch midwife, her her dark um dark godmother or whatever she wanted to call it. It was like because they didn't say godmother because <laughs> they are these witches are satanists, which that bothers a lot of per, a lot of people. Which it did okay. Here's the thing. It did not bother me that they were satanists because I thought that that was you know that's witch lore that like old timey witches you know were the daughters of of the night and the devil is the dark lord now that bother per people but that don't bother me because i'm not finna convert or do anything like that one i'm not a witch and second and most important of all i am cub smothered and covered with the blood of the lamb okay so i don't need to be feeling any kind of way and this is fiction that's the other final point so it made sense that didn't bother me i knew it i know it bothered a lot of us but yeah and people were upset there wasn't a lot of um black people but the few black people that there were that were in sabrina were some of the more interesting characters i did not find sabrina to be the most interesting character even though this is about sabrina my name is sabrina spellman and i will not sign it away um, like Ambrose and Prudence, I liked them. Um, I actually liked Mrs. Blackwood because her motivations, like she had been going through with Father Blackwood. Now, I don't know how old she is, but witches apparently in this world, they like don't give birth until, you know, was it like a year? It was something crazy. Like they had extra months. <laughs> like it was like, you weren't just nine months and then boom, you're ready to go. It was like, no. Nah. You were like just ain't like an elephant, <laughs> like two, like two years. It wasn't two years, but I don't remember. Um, 
So yeah, I, I also want to know, my other question is, is Dr. Severus, what is he? Is he a werewolf? Do the werewolves and the vampires, and the, not vampires, werewolves and the witches get beef, if that's the case? Is he, is he still a good dude? Cause I want, um, Aunt Hilda to be happy cause bless her heart, she just finally got out of that house and it's finally out. And I know she old, she was talking about celebrating when Queen Victoria got crowned. So she old, you know. Um, that's the main thing I want to see if Susie um, is gonna have any more power cause I knew she saw her, um, her aunt, her family member, or whatever, I can't remember their relation. Her um her ancestor um helped her do things. So at first I thought that might have been a bit of a delusion or somebody else was sending that to her. So I do wonder if it works more for her or not. Um and then Roz, Raj has the cunning, so she sees the future, she sees things for what they really are like. She's losing her physical eyesight, but it's, it's almost like bringing it back to Game of Thrones. You know how Bran fell, and then like opened up his third eye. The same thing happened with Roz. Roz going blind, and it's opening up her third eye. So, <laughs> that's where we are. I want to know the extent of that power is is Nick Scratch the devil? Or is he, yeah, the devil slash dark lord? Is Or is he the son of the devil slash dark lord? Because he ain't right. You know who else ain't right? Luke. That's Ambrose's little boyfriend. He ain't right either. What's that about? And then my final question is, Salem gonna talk? We heard them say a little something. And we know that the familiars can talk because the familiars are not actually animals. They are goblins, but they take animal form. So, that's just like Mrs. Um... Mm, I can't think of her name, that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually like a demon who like who played herself ultimately because it's like girl you actually tra training your replacement with Sabrina um and did y'all peep the trailer the trailer was off the chain Sabrina is going to be doing everything she ain't got no business doing even according to witches uh, <laughs> so yeah so yeah, a girl, you're training your replacement. So she, um, her, her little, um, owl. She did not have an owl. She had like a raven or a crow. I'm gonna lean more towards raven because ravens are, seem to be scarier than crows. Crows just seem nasty. So, <laughs> even though they're really smart, but that's beside the point. So, I'm wondering is, like, hers talked and, um, Salem did say something, even though it was real faint, so and very quick, so people kind of missed it. Because when he first came up on Sabrina, when she did that like um, summoning spell to get the, her familiar instead of just picking one out of a book, like he chose Sabrina and they chose each other. So I'm wondering if Salem is going to speak some more. Now, I'm, he ain't got to speak the way that the one, even though I loved the Salem on. Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but that was actually a witch who had done something illegal and he got cursed as a cat. So he, so he wasn't really a familiar. I can't believe, was he related to Sabrina? I don't know, but it's just like, people that's alive, you know, like her parents are alive in the comic books, and um, but they're like evil too. So Sabrina's navigating a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, ooh, Miss Wordwell, that's that teacher's name, even though she's Lilith slash Madam Satan, even though, girl, you, you're playing yourself, you, you trained your replacement, he, you know it ain't right, you know he just wants to train you in for a younger model, girl, so you know you're gonna have beef with Sabrina, but that ain't your fault, it's your fault, that ain't her fault, it's your fault. You boo-boo the fool up in here. So I have a lot of questions. I'm so glad these last two shows that all my block is Sabrina is starting like in all my block starts this week and basically Sabrina starts like next week or a week and a half away from it. And I might bring it and I'm gonna watch all that before Game of Thrones starts back again on the 14th. I'm more excited about those other two shows. Um and then cause I feel like 
yeah, basically since you were gone for, you might as well say two years, I've been looking for other stuff, man. And, and, and like I said, I have not loved Game of Thrones since after Joffrey died. After that season, it just went downhill. So I, at this point, I have been watching just to see how they're going to wrap it up. Because this might be the only version that we're all alive to get the end of because again George R. R. Martin ain't finished them daggone books even though I can't rush you this is your creative process but sir please <laughs> finish I want to see and there's some things that there's no way they're going to happen the same way because there are different people that are dead in the show are very much alive in the book and he said he had no intention of killing some people that or that there are extra characters that never make an appearance on the show but they are you know in the books and they're important so you know david dan and brian just did whatever they felt like doing and this is what it is and and i don't care how much you love the show you're not going to, most of the time, just like with most things, the books are just always better. Because there's certain things you just straight up can't do on television. Or that if you don't have the skill to, you know, share that or express that, to write that out, to even show how this goes. There's, there's no way, you know? Like they, they, and I don't think that their writers, especially David and Dan, are capable of certain things. And we can see that even with just the familiar relationships and just everyday conversation, because the, the dialogue on some of these is, ooh, Lord have mercy, boo boo. And I blame, I blame, I blame us. I blame the Emmys people, y'all have, let these people get away with some of that and have rewarded them for poor dialogue. Like, the Battle of the Bastards did not need an Emmy for best writing. Cause then nobody say nothing worth saying. <laughs> no, that was not, like it was fantastic to look at. You should get all the technical, physical things. It looked great. Dialogue on zero. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, Oh, I'm rambling, but let me end this. I think I'll be back maybe next week um, to, with another mask and be moaning because it's always something on TV. And I watch American Gods. American Gods is out here, y'all. So if you need your fantastical fix, it's currently in the, not even in the middle. We're like the third episode into the second. Well, for them, it might be the middle because the first season was only eight episodes. That's that's a mind trip too. And then the the author is writing for the show more. I know like George R. R. Martin had to stop for Game of Thrones because he done released every book except <laughs> finishing a song of Ice and Fire. I don't care about the Targaryen middle child that Aegon had. Aegon eighty seven and his 17 sister wives. I don't care, bruh. I want to hear about the rest of a song, Eyes and Fire. What is happening with Ned and Catelyn's children? I don't care. <laughs> Arthur, what's gonna happen to all the Lannisters? It's Buku Lannisters. Are they still gonna be a house when everything is said and done? Now they may have a little, I'm not even can't even get into the show. It's so much stuff, cause it's like, it's mad Lannisters. And it's like three of them on the show. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna take this off my face. I done went all off the deep end. So maybe the next one will be about maybe on my block. That was kind of the easiest, quickest watch. And then Sabrina. And then uh, if y'all like this enough, we might go episode by episode in that final season of Game of Thrones. Because that's only six episodes. And then they ain't even all that long. So, okay, let me stop complaining. Y'all have a blessed rest of the day. And remember that Nessie loves you. Bye. Oh, remember to thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. Because I want to hear how y'all feel about these two. All right, y'all have a good one. Bye.